All right, so the engine fits in here almost so close to perfect, it's almost too perfect, which is why, of course, it doesn't perfectly fit. So if you didn't follow all that, here's basically what's going on. The engine fits perfectly in between the frame rails on the Mini Cooper. However, what ends up happening is the engine side is limited on how far it can tuck towards the frame rail. The transmission is able to tuck underneath the frame rail on the passenger side, but the issue is that it actually causes that side's axle to stick out further. The result is the axle on the driver's side actually tucks in, uh, and you're not able to make it equal on both sides. So basically you'll have the drivetrain offset about an inch on one side, sticking out too far, and an inch on the other side too far in. So in order to actually fix this, uh, what we have to do is cut our frame rail to get an extra inch of clearance. So we are about two inches off of center uh, on this piece. So it's perfectly centered under the frame rail on one side, the other side sticks out about two inches too far. So in order to equalize that, we actually have to split that difference and bring it in one more inch. The problem, of course, is that there is a frame rail in the way, and that is where our pulleys are spinning. So what we have to do is actually cut our frame rail uh, to create that space. Now our frame rail is made of, uh, looks like 16 or 14 gauge um, steel that is pressed and then uh, spot welded together. And uh, cut across this frame rail to open up the inside and then we're going to weld in some plate steel along that seam to close it up. Uh, and also to reinforce that structure, we're going to do that with eighth of an inch plate um, to hopefully regain as much of that strength as possible since we are removing a good bit of steel. Now with all that said, let's basically get to work. So one of the first things we want to make note of is how much space we have to work with front to back, left to right. So as you see, the belt here is about a quarter of an inch um, from the inner part of the frame rail here, which is already super, super close and a little bit on the nerve wracking side. So I want to get about half inch to three quarters of an inch. Now the whole engine itself is rotated a little bit, so we may be able to rotate it like that and say, okay, now we have about one centimeter gap, uh, which is nice, but as we shift, even if we cut this frame rail here and we get another uh, three quarters of an inch to an inch of clearance, the flange here that the uh, steel bumper actually mounts to is going to be in the way. So as you can see, as we move our engine in, our alternator is actually going to come in contact with this bit of the frame rail. So we do need to cut out part of this frame rail flange in order to get the alternator and of course the entire engine further in. It's going to center it where it needs to be so that we have uh, I believe it's 34 inches going out on one side and 34 inches going the, on the other side. Currently, we have 36 inches on one side, 33 inches on the other side, so we're not getting an equal balance, so our suspension is going to be cockeyed. Our entire uh, wheelbase is actually going to be shifted. So to correct that, uh, this is what we have to do. We have to move this engine over, or else we have to create custom axles, which is going to cause a whole other host of issues, not just financial. Um, but of course it's going to mean a lot more difficulty with mocking everything up as well as getting replacement parts down the road. If this car gets in an accident, I want to be able, you know, I hit a pothole, I snap an axle, whatever. I want to be able to just buy a solution. I don't want to have to go and custom make another axle for a couple hundred bucks. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this square in. Now I'm going to measure from the center of the frame rail and I'm going to measure from the center of the GSX subframe. That's actually getting me two and a quarter inches. So splitting the difference is one and one eighth inch. Uh, if we go one and a quarter inch, that's going to give us a little extra space. We'll see if that's actually manageable. Now let's go ahead and make sure the other side is center as well. As close to center as it can be. So that means that that side is going to have all of the uh, adjustment measurements. We just got to split that difference and move it over. So, all right. So taking it in an inch and a half puts the center of this bolt hole. Now, one thing to keep in mind, we don't want to measure an inch and a half inch from the flange, we want to measure an inch and a half in from this part of the box section. It's going to be approximately three eighths, between three eighths and five sixteenths, sorry, three eighths and seven sixteenths, in from that flange. So we'll go three eighths, so we want to go in three eighths plus an inch 
and an eighth. So we're going to come in an inch and a half, basically, from this flange edge. And that's where we need to make our space. Now that is quite a lot. So this box section currently is four inches. So that's where we're cutting our line here. Where that puts us on the actual frame rail is right here where the spot welds are holding the seam together. It's basically taking us straight back along that seam. And then let's check what the structure is on the inside. And that is not good. All right, so as we look in here, what we see in there, we've got some tubes that are going vertically. Those tubes line up with the engine mounts. We do have to get the paint out of there on both sides um, and we'll, we'll end up making through and we'll measure the beam and, and see how the deflection is kind of over this piece. Right now it's still somewhat strong but even I can get it to deflect just by a little bit of pushing. So um, we're definitely going to come in, we're going to box this side up, and then we're going to tie in here with a little bit of gusseting to kind of help transition that a little bit. Alright, so the important bit that we're working on now is we need to make sure this engine is aligned and that all of our cuts are perfect. Of course, if we didn't take enough off, then we're going to run into the issue, of course, of needing to remove everything later on. So it's best to make sure everything is as perfect as you can get exactly where it's going to sit so that you have no issues with clashing later on. And we're going to make sure that we have the engine back in the exact same spot. You can see how much we can move it over. And we're using the bolt holes in the GSX that are symmetrical in the GSX frame to make sure that everything's aligned. So now that all that's confirmed, it's got to pull it back out again, get the space to cut everything. And this sucker's pretty heavy. All right, so riding on the inside lip here, we've got our steel plate. And uh, I just got it clamped here in place to hold it so it doesn't fall over. Um, pretty much we're just tracing our line out. So I'm going to cut pretty much right on this line and the kerf of the blade is hopefully going to keep us uh, pretty much very close to what we need. Now we're going to box it on the inside of the beam so that that way in case the weld isn't as strong as it could be because again I'm not a perfect welder, uh, the, the beam itself will work to keep it in place. So the strength is being taken by the metal and not the weld. If we put it here then the weld is taking all of the shear but if we put it on top it's taking zero shear and it's only in compression um, of course, you'll have bending forces and things like that, but just looking in this plane, we're only having compression on it, which again, this is where our, one of the mounts where our engine is going to be hanging, so there's going to be a significant compression load pushing down on this piece here. So, um, and we are going to finish that cut. Got it maxed out on the back, and I'm just going to mark it in here. All right, I'm going to clamp this in the vise. Give it a chop with the Sawzall to get our shape, or at least our basic shape. Alright, so just a little bit of final prep on the frame rail. Just grinding off any of the extra paint bits or any shavings that might still be on there. Just to make sure it's nice and clean for when we do our full welds here. Now this took quite a bit. I did a combination of stitch welding and just full welding, just varying on how the heat went into the metal and making sure not to get too hot in any spots. Didn't want to distort anything. I didn't want to blow through. So just keeping all that in check. And of course, got to clean it all off, prep it for paint so we don't have any rusting going on. And for right now, we're just going to go ahead and lay down a basic primer to help seal that metal. It's not perfect. If I really wanted to be like a super body work person, yeah, I could totally have done better, um, but again, I'm much more of a functional person. I'm not going to SEMA, at least not anytime soon, so <sighs> it'd be nice to go to SEMA. I would make this look nicer if I went to SEMA, but 